How does it feel to have your game finally out that you've been working on for a really long time? I'm like really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> I bet. Is uh, it, was it a relief to post it or is it more work when you posted it, when you released it? No, it's it's more work. It, it becomes a different type of work as well. Like you, um, I, I sort of, we had like a little party in the office and I had to give a speech and everything. And I thought of, at the time, the only thing I could think of is it's really just like handing your baby out to like thousands of people who start calling your baby like either the cutest baby or the ugliest baby or your baby like sucks <laughs> and like, or your baby's amazing. And it's, you know, all of that at one time, especially um, very luckily, of course, on the scale with which we've had um, is kind of overwhelming, right? We're a small team. And all of a sudden, there's just this wave of everybody knows your your game. Everybody knows all of its positives, all of its flaws. And everyone, um, you know, sort of talks about it in different ways. And it really is quite a unique situation that I don't think uh, there are many experiences. And maybe, you know, you guys releasing your videos and stuff like that, something maybe that you've worked on really, really hard for a long time. And then all of a sudden, you know, you expose it to the world and then it becomes this crazy thing. But yeah, it's it's a different kind of feeling now. Um, you know, you go to trade shows and you meet people and then people give you an inkling to what maybe the general feedback will be. And then you can take that and be like, oh, okay, maybe it'll be positive. But then there really is no second tries uh, on a release. Mm -hmm. So you do it and hopefully you've got it right. And um, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. It really is. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. And yeah, we just got to keep going. It's an exhausting time, but we're still in the the throngs of the release and, and well, making sure it's, it's everything been goes right. a great reception so far. It was a nine or 90 on yeah. Metacritic. Is it still a 90? That's uh, incredible. It yeah. were, it's gone down since then. It's about, it's 83. I think now it's 83. That's still it's really still very great. high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it's kind of interesting actually, because, um, I didn't expect it to be so divisive, which is, I didn't think, you know, this- <laughs> What's divisive, divisive about it? In yeah. What way? I, <clears throat> it's golf. Uh, well, that's the thing. I, that's what I thought. But because I think a lot of people like golf games, golf games are, you know, quite a tried and true uh, formula, yeah. uh, I sense. I think a lot of people who wanted to like a golf game came into this maybe expecting too much of a golf game and then got this different- you know, golf roguelike experience that they maybe didn't gel with or it kind of disappointed them because it wasn't what they expected. And then, so especially with the reviews, I mean, we've not had anything less, I think, than a 6.5, which is really good because that's still good. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the, you know, maybe in the professional reviews, the negatives are that, oh, I just wanted a chill time and to play golf, uh, which not oh, necessarily I, is I mean, this game, right? I mean... <laughs> God forbid you try shaking up the formula a little bit. That, I mean, that, can't they just go and play one of the million other golf games? Yeah. So, uh, and then on the flip side of that is that the people who wanted uh, what this game could offer them, like, then they really enjoy it. And I think the positives that we see are really positives. Uh, uh, and then the negatives are kind of, you know, a bit negative, more negative than I thought maybe. But uh, it generally all has the same trend. So it feels good to, I think the worst thing you can ever have is a game that comes out and then there's like a thousand different problems and everyone's finding something wrong that's different. Yeah. Um, yeah. But with us, it's like the positives are the positives and, and everyone sort of is praising it for those reasons. It's different. It's unique. It's a polished experience. It's uh, fun and replayable. Uh, and then the people who maybe are not gelling with it don't like it because of literally probably the same two or three reasons, the difficulty, uh, the vision that we allow in the game. Uh, and then possibly the fact that maybe, uh, towards the end, you know, they get a bit, the courses can be a bit long, like the holes. If you don't take the shortcuts, if you take the main path, it, they can be long and take time. So it's great to have essentially feedback that is easily adjustable. The problem is nobody's going to re review it. Right. So you just have to kind <laughs> of keep it up. Uh, and when you update it and stuff like that, make sure. But yeah, as you guys say, it's a. I probably focus maybe too much on the negatives just because it's my job to do so from this point we all on, do. right? We all do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I cannot believe it. It's like 83 on Metacritic. It's like 80 on Open Critic. It has everybody that we wanted to play. You know, from that perspective of you know, you have this bank of people in your mind 
uh, or who you really wish would play it um, to give you that exposure or to you know, get it in the right hands. Like we had Northern Lion play it recently. And I saw that, yeah. Yeah, he's like, you know, golf and roguelike is like smashing his two favorite genres together and he seems to be enjoying it as well. So that's really good. Um, and then, yeah, it's been reviewed almost everywhere. I think only maybe like IGN is not the place that's reviewed it yet, but, you know, GameSpot gave it a 9 out of 10 and stuff like that. Um, to give you a, 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 a my a weird perspective from like, I guess a consumer, but also mm. a YouTuber who reviews a lot of indie games and yeah. likes to think I keep my finger on the pulse of indie games when they release, yours like is on the radar. Like there are, <laughs> there are so many games that come out every single day that just fly under the radar you, yeah. you kind of feel bad for the devs yours is so painfully on the radar in a great way <laughs> um and then you know people that are playing it are having great things to say about it so yeah. whatever you did leading up to the launch or just the game itself is definitely resonating with people I, I yeah th i think it, making yourself a personality in the marketing definitely helped it resonate with people i'll help put it in the i liked stream. your little video on twitter today i yeah. watched that yeah i think that's the best i think that's the best thing we've done it's the most i mean we play games too right we're not just game devs anyway we come up you, know, you can see you know my plethora of crap behind me right like it's a I've case of i've always been a gamer right and and i think in the interest when things go wrong um you want to know kind of what's happening or what people are going to do about it but also Games are made by human beings. They're, they're not, you know, you could think of EA as, you know, a massive faceless corporation or something like that. But there are, you know, even people there who work really hard to make experiences for people to enjoy. And then on the indie game level, it is a case of like five to ten human beings just working away at it. And that's what we are. And we're very proud of our little game. And we want to show it off in the best way we can, which is basically to have the people who know it best to talk about it, um, which is us. And then hopefully just basically give a human element to it. And I think that's one of the best things we've done. And I think we'll carry on doing it, uh, especially as we approach the more negative things, which is like bug fixing and, and updates and stuff like that. So the video did, we did recently is to approach the switch issue at the moment, which is pretty bad and on us, unfortunately. What, what is that? Crash. What happened? What'd you There's do? a crash. Uh, I, you would like it, Bob, because you hate the Scotsman. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's a crash in the Scotsman if he gets to a certain point. Um, so if he gets towards the latter stage, um, this never came up until, honestly, the last build we made for Switch, which is it, due to the performance of the Switch and the way the Switch handles frame rates and, and like, you know, we call it time step in the game. Uh, we have things like the teleporters and the fans that, you know, depending on the performance of a of the game at that time can bug out. Um, so when he hits his shot, because his shot travels at a certain velocity, which is quite fast considering he hits it really hard, uh, it can actually mess up and crash the game. And unfortunately, it's oh, more God. it's more reprobable uh, by more reprobable. It's like almost ninety percent of the time. So. That absolutely sucks. That's been like the biggest problem we had. And this then goes back to what you guys talked to me about last time, which is like going through submission and stuff like that. We submitted a fix to Nintendo on Friday. It's Monday. Well, it's Tuesday here now and they've still not released it. So people keep asking us every day, when's it going to be released? And even we don't know. So it's incredibly oh, no. frustrating. Um, but that's just one of the things, right? That's kind of on us. Um, you know, everybody says, oh, basic QA would have found this out. And it's like, look it wasn't in the game until the last minute right you make a change also you like don't you pay happen. nintendo to check that <laughs> well exactly like, isn't that you know, part of gonna... the eShop situation <sighs> that's a difficult one because those guys are not going to do everything but right that i think this bug got through because it's a case of like we play the game really really well and you have to try to nerf oh, yourself okay. to test those things so that's something where the scotsman if he was able to beat me which he's not um, so really the only people getting the crash are the people that suck so yeah you maybe can maybe if they were a little better you, <laughs> you know? can you can get past it um but it does suck because of course if you've bought a brand new game that you've been excited about and you can only get to the first boss and you can't beat him because it crashes or whatever that is not great and that is entirely on us so that sucks that's been like my waking nightmare every day hoping that i wake up to an email from nintendo saying it's released um but yeah so you know, but talking about it openly, I think, is the best way. A lot of devs, I think, hide away from it because 
mentally, that's probably the best thing to do. Like if you get stuck in these things, you'll never be able to tackle them. But for us, it's a case of we've been like face first, the entire development. We'll just keep going. We'll update you and, you know, we'll be honest about it. And even if you're still upset or angry, then, you know, we'll do our best to rectify that. But yeah, the player response has for the for the most part been really, really good. And uh, I can't it, it's amazing to think I've always just wanted to make it make games but then you know that dream then shifts into always have, wanting to make a game that goes big or does well and we've got a nine out of ten for game spot as wood says you know it's the one of the most talked about games at the moment and people are actually buying it it's kind of like oh okay we did it <laughs> we kind of did it <laughs> no you definitely did i'm really really happy for you really proud thanks, of you thanks, and thanks. you know obviously it was mostly because of our podcast and yeah 100 it yeah mm-hmm. i mean yeah i was just saying <laughs>